Really happy to welcome back to the program today, Quincy College President uh, Dr. Rick DeCristofaro for a little reflection on the uh, really newsmaking uh, commencement ceremony, Rick, and uh, some positive things coming up. Good to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you, Joe, and, and I hope all is well. Uh, it is, thank you, and I hope for you and yours as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to thank uh, Quincy Access TV for everything that they do. Uh, the role they played in commencement as well was extraordinary. And so we appreciate that very much. Yeah, we had we had a tremendous, uh, really a, a near perfect uh, commencement, uh, focusing on on what it should be focused on: our students, and then our students, and then even more our students. And you know, we had a uh, an incredible guest speaker, you know, a keynote speaker, and Rob Hale, who um, I know you know him. I know pretty much the audience knows him as someone that you know is is um, CEO over at uh, Grand Intel Communications, but also. Uh, owns Fox Rock, and Fox Rock is is really doing so much um, to revitalize the downtown and just do so many other things that uh, he is just a, an incredible philanthropist. Um, actually, he and his wife Karen are uh, noted as one of the fifty most philanthropic uh, people in the country, not just the big city here or Massachusetts, the whole United States. He's just a tremendous gentleman and has a great heart, and so he felt very strongly in, in initial discussions that he was going to gift these students um, somehow, some way. And, uh, and then he called and said, hey, you know what? I want you to get two envelopes together. Uh, one says gift, one says give. And I want you to bring them down to Snug Harbor Community School and have the kids there, the young kids, put some really happy stuff on it for graduates. So we did that. Uh, and then we got the envelopes to him. And then he said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put $500 in uh, each gift envelope for each of our graduates and $500 uh, for them to, to really think about a gift to others, whether it's an organization, whether it's family members, whether it's people that have been through really tough times in COVID, you know, and they'll do that, you know, what they wish with that $500. So that's what he announced. He said, today I'm going to give you all $1,000 in cash. So when he said that, he had a van with two armed guards on the side. They opened, they opened the, the, the gates, the doors, and these two gentlemen come out with the bags uh, of, of envelopes. So, uh, and he had he and his wife and his mom, Judy, uh, to share those gifts before they came and got their uh, dif diplomas from, from myself. So um, it, was, it was really wonderful. And to see the reaction of these students and, and the, the need that they have and everyone has, but to, to give something to them like that and then provide them with the opportunity to, 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 to give to someone else. Um, an absolutely extraordinary idea, which was mine, uh, but it wasn't. <laughs> no, I know the bigger message was to teach them basically um, it, that it is better to give than, than receive. And it'll be so yeah. curious to see going forward um, what this money does in the future to follow maybe some of these stories. Yeah, I think, I think we will. And I think that's, that's a great idea. I mean, to, to follow them, to talk about um, the difference, you know, that for, you know, going forward, moving forward and, and um, making sure that, that it's made a difference, you know, and, and we will do that. And I hope we get a great response from our graduates to say this is, this is what I did with my gift. And then get that back to, to Rob Hale and to say, this is the difference that you made. It just keeps on giving So That's right. And that is, that is his gift, right? That will be, yeah. that will be what he gets out of all this. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good man. We're, we're lucky to have him in the city uh, and, and so involved uh, in revitalizing so many parts of the city. So he's, he's, uh, he's a great partner. Yeah, you know, I think his his rags to riches story. You know, I've heard it before, and it's extremely inspirational. And and I think it will hit hard with a lot of uh, the graduates. Yeah. yeah, it is, and to have his mom right there when he's talking about you know hitting a very you know incredible low in his business career and his life, and having them uh, put up their house uh, as collateral to just show the love of family and and um, the reward of just sticking with it and. Uh, no, I, I thought it was pretty cool. I, I love that that family piece where they stuck with him, and is in his kind of his darkest hour. But you know, I said to him when he told me the story a long time ago. He said, "Well, you know, I lost a billion and a half of dollars." So I looked around the room. I said, "Well, did you find it uh, anywhere?" He said, "No, but I found three or four billion more." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Everything life turned out okay. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and it really, you know, it beckons to the, the heart of the mission of Quincy College, pretty yes. much really, um, that anybody, anybody can be successful if they put their minds and their hearts and their souls into it. You're, you're absolutely right. And that is the mission of the college. And I think so, so much that I think he was struck uh, by the reaction. You know, it wasn't just a reaction of, oh, thank you, thank you. It was a reaction of, this is what I am going to do. Um, it's funny, so thank you so very, very much, which led to that next piece. So, so many of the students went through and said, hey, you know, uh, I, you know, I need work and I would love to work for you someday and whatever. So he, in his mind, says, okay, I have about 200 jobs open, you know, all, you know, the, the right level uh, job. Uh, so then, you know, he called me on Monday morning and said, let's have a career fair because these students, you know, all they talked about was really kind of working. They want a job, they want to go forward, they want to be successful. So let's help them. And, and um, so that's when he said, let's have a career fair. I'll come and I'll speak, uh, you know, for a very short time. And I'll bring five or six of my basic department heads, coordinators with them. And they can meet with as many students as show up, you know. And then when I said, well, yeah, we can talk about a date. Uh, and he said, how about Wednesday? And I said, oh, sure, yeah, Wednesdays are good days, right? You know, he said, no, no, I'm talking about this Wednesday. Right. You know, and that was Monday morning. So, so we're, we're, um, we're bracing for that right now. Uh, you know, making sure that we get it out to as many uh, of our graduates. So I'm hoping that a lot of graduates show up. He said, uh, Rick, I, I don't really care if there's just 10 that show up. If we can make a difference in that 10, that's why I'm here. Okay. Well, I mean, what better testament for uh, what an education from Quincy College does than to start oh, yeah, right off the new job? Right. Absolutely right. And I hope he, you know, continues to be really in contact with, you know, us and our students, you know, in regard to, this type of thing, careers, you know, and making sure that there's a pathway for them, not necessarily with more funding. I don't mean that mm -hmm. in any way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just that idea that, that you know, you can succeed too, you know, and, and coming to speak to students maybe in the small groups. Uh, I think they would love that, and I think he actually would like that as well. So that's kind of where we where we'd love to go. With yeah, it. yeah. Do you think it will inspire other uh, CEOs uh, to say, oh, Quincy College, you know, uh, let me take another look at them and see what's going on there? Yeah, and not only CEOs, but also people that don't have uh, a lot uh, of wealth, you know, are wealthy and, and just get the idea that to give, whether it's $2 or 200 or 2000 or in his case, 200000 300000 400000 you know, the whole idea of, of using your heart, you know, to guide you and to to say, you know what, how can I help someone in need? Uh, really, that the message is not just to those people with you know, a lot of money, like you, Joe. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's you know, it's just it's a message, and I think the message carries throughout. It's not a you know certain thing, but it, let me tell you, if, if a CEO gets this message that they uh, can make a difference like that in a very short, brief way. I think you are. I think that will continue on to other CEOs uh, that have that ability. Yeah, and it you know it, it can benefit them in the long run too. It's a, it's a new job pool, you know, a, a new yes, yeah, top of uh, potential employees. Uh, yeah. so there's a lot to. Have you had any instant reaction uh, at all? No, the instant reaction um, were emails from people that don't have a lot to do with the college in Quincy. Yeah, uh, to say that first of uh, all well, the, the, the um, but the, will we held it at Veterans Memorial Stadium just looked absolutely stunning, it was beautiful, credit the city, credit the college, uh, all that sort of stuff that was just about the, the facility that mm -hmm. we had, it, you know, and it makes them proud in Quincy that we can hold something like that, it makes them proud in Quincy that uh, some of those Quincy graduates or all those Quincy graduates were there and took place and something that they will never, ever, ever forget, but also to bring students from outside of Quincy, and whether you're from Braintree or, or, or Weymouth or, or Plymouth or Boston, to see such a beautiful place and to be such a, um, to be a part of something that all in all is a, a really perfect ceremony. I think that's, you know, that's those immeasurable pieces mm -hmm. of culture in Quincy that I think is everywhere in the city. You know, it's, it's not, it's not about dollars and cents. It's about an impression, a perception of a, an incredible city that cares. Well, speaking of, um, you know, a, a, a facility and, uh, and an impression since last we talked, um, uh, the mayor has withdrawn his plans uh, yes. right now, at least, uh, to buy the Monroe building. Um, how do you feel about that, Rick? 
Well, you know, it was it was a pretty difficult task, uh, I think, to go through for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, I respect, I highly respect the city council, uh, you know, for what their feelings are. But it was more the division of thought to me. You know, it was more about the funding and the taxpayers, you know, that they were focusing on. But I, what I was a little bit disheartened was is that we were right, Quincy College was right in the center of the discussion, and um, it produced some, I think, some negative connotation about the college that may not have been as accurate as people thought. But again, on Zoom, you know, in, in that situation, it's really hard to, 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 to listen, you know, and come back with things. It's just much more difficult in person. You can have an exchange of thought, but, you know, I couldn't. And, and that was a little frustrating to me. Um, but, you know, they're, they're the city council and, and uh, either, you know, whether they were you know, smoothly and, and nicely with the, with the mayor all the time, or some of the time, that's, that's politics. Not only in Quincy, that's everywhere. So yeah. um, are we disappointed here as a college, uh, Board of Governors disappointed? Yeah, we are. Um, but we support the mayor, and if the mayor finds another way um, to fund, um, you know, the, the purchase of that property, you know, that, that would be um, a real godsend for this college. It cannot you know, in five or six years, it, it, it'll be presented again uh, with the fact that where do we go? Where is the real Quincy College? Where's the home for Quincy College? Where's the sense of permanence that, that every organization needs? But certainly this college since 1958, actually started in 53, 54 with courses. You know, they, they've done, you know, they, this college and its students and faculty um, has endured all of these changes and all of these shifts. And, through no one's fault. It's not the city council's fault. It's not the mayor at the time's fault. It's just what it what it was, and, and uh, the times just changed. And as the times changed, the focus on the college may have been different. You know, mm. but, you know. So I, I I think that we we are disappointed. But I, uh, on the other side of it, I think we have tremendous confidence in the mayor uh, that he loves this college and he realizes that you know to be in that historic. Uh, place of, of Hancock Green, Adams Hancock Green, um, is really important and it will mean something for a very long, long period of time. On the city council end, can we afford it? Is it the right thing? In the middle is what's going to happen. And I always, in this city especially, realize that something good always happens. It may not take the form, you know, that initiated and started with, but it's something good happens. Look at the city's tremendous and how it cares for people. So, I have confidence that that something good will happen. What that is, Joe, don't ask. Okay. Okay. No well, <laughs> The mayor's already talked happen. about. Uh, he's talked about using uh, some of the American Rescue Plan funds, uh, the federal funds that were gifted to the city uh, for the pandemic. So yeah, I, I think he's he's looking at every available um, fund. You know, whether it's county, whether it's state, or whether it's federal. Yeah. yeah. Um, he did say that he felt if it didn't, if the college didn't have a permanent home, that ultimately it would not succeed. Do you, do you feel that same way? No, I think it'll always succeed. Again, you know, since the late 50s, this, this college has endured uh, a tremendous amount of ups and downs, and, uh, and it always comes out, you know, whether yeah. it's times of really de a deep decline in enrollment uh, or when it's, when it's really um, doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. enrollment and, and, and revenue, you know? So I think it will always have that balance and there'll always be times where the enrollment isn't what we hope, uh, but there are other ways to keep this college moving and going forward. And I think we're doing that. I think we're doing that. So, um, but I do understand that if, if indeed to, it comes to a place that we're here and the rent is so significant that it impacts the, the budget in such a way uh, that it makes it very difficult to, to stay uh, and viable. I, I agree with them in that regard. I'm hoping, and uh, our vision here is one that keeps this this college going for quite some time. Yeah. What's uh, going to be happening over the summertime at Quincy College, Rick? Yeah, we have a few things going on. I mean, we have summer one session, summer two session. Uh, it never stopped. That's the difference. One of the differences between Quincy Public Schools and here. Although in the school system this summer, they're doing accelerated. They're, they're very, very busy. Yes. You know? Teachers are involved as much as possible, so it's very unique and different. But normally, the June, July, August would be a little bit quieter. You could get stuff done as a superintendent over there and, and work hard and have a summer school. But um, here, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, some pathways for, for students um, in biotechnology uh, and having students come in with teachers and having professional development and programming for students uh, here at Quincy College in July. 
uh, not just for Quincy, but the South Shore. So we're, we're enrolling in that right now, um, which I think is a, a really good thing. We're, we're really preparing as the summer goes on, preparing for our baccalaureate uh, program in business. And, you know, everyone knows that enrollment drives the bus. And it's easy to look at the college and say, oh, the enrollment, oh, the enrollment. But you, you really have to look at our budget. You have to look at what we're doing and see what we're doing to understand that it's, it's about enrollment in a, in a significant way. But there are so many other pieces of that budget that we can embellish upon, uh, like workforce development. You know, when you go from 600,000 bringing in uh, workforce development to over a million to now next year progressing, looking at uh, more than uh, 2 million and, and working the community and having so many things to the state with our community block uh, grant development money, all those sorts of things. So um, we'll work at that over the summer. We'll prepare those uh, pieces of revenue. Uh, as well as dual enrollment continuing here in Quincy and about seven or eight other communities. That's a piece of revenue, but it's also an incredible opportunity for advanced kids, for honors kids, uh, working on career pathways, you know, uh, first year seminars over the summer, all the students that are coming here to have a seminar to get them ready and build, someone build a cohort of students, you know, to get ready for the summer. So, um, but I think more than anything else, we, we're working at enrollment. That, that's what we're doing every single day. Day, whether it's admissions, whether it's advising, whether it's financial aid, you know, we're all working together. We have a new welcome center here, uh, you know, where the bookstore was. Mm -hmm. uh, that we have everyone right there, so it's one-stop shopping. When students come in, it's no longer go to the third floor, go to the fourth floor, go to the fifth floor. You know, that's where we do all of our student engagement, uh, initial student engagement. So that that's something that we're again working on. Awesome. Are you in person or online or a combination? It's a combination. And it's very interesting because, because it is a business. You know, you have to look at your clients and you have to appreciate what the clients feel. So, so it's, I think it's changing. And, you know, as we look toward having more in person, there may be some reluctance uh, for that. Yep. And they would rather rely on where they've been. It's just very, very interesting. But I'm hoping that as we progress summer one, summer two, that in the fall, you know, there'll be more in-person classes. But as a business, again, you have, you, have to, you have to be driven by your client interests and client needs. So uh, we're going to do our best uh, to, to, to give as many options as we possibly can to our students and our faculty. Give the people what they want, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of uh, staff uh, hiring, are there positions open at Quincy College? Not really. It's very interesting. I mean, you okay. went through some, some real restructuring two years ago. Uh, and I, so I think that uh, the staff that's here uh, loves it here. They stay here. And um, many are not as old as I am, which is a real good thing. Uh, so they're sticking around. I, I think it's a good thing. And uh, there may be one retirement, you know, and that retirement will be uh, replaced. So it's not like we're downsizing. You know, we're, we're, we're right where we need to be in regards to our faculty. Uh, in regard to our staffing. If we do anything with our budget, if we, we, we have a balanced budget again, which is great, but, but you know, in that budget, there's a lot of shifting, you know, you're taking a look at where are the priorities, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that, again, welcoming students and admissions, you know, making sure we have advising, making sure we have student life and students that may have a uh, need, uh, accessibility issues, that we're taking care uh, of that, those students, and that, that's, that's really who, uh, or what Quincy College is. So there's a lot of shipping going on, but uh, we, we don't have the uh, significant issues in, in uh, budget and staffing that, that there was here at one time. Very good. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to let folks know about right now, Rick? Sure, I mean, I think, I think there's a lot of, of, of things. Number one, we had a really great uh, pending on Nurses Penny uh, on May 18th over at the Lloyd Hill Auditorium. Uh, 42 nurses were pinned wow. uh, that night, and then we have another 41 coming up in the next cohort, which is good. And now we're building enrollment for this next cohort. So, you know, we feel strongly that you know I, 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 that this nursing program is back. Uh, you know, it's not going to be immediately you know, 525 nurses. I wouldn't want it to be because we're not right. ready for that. Uh, but builds incrementally that nursing program. So we're we're very confident that that program is coming back. We have an excellent faculty uh, and dean. So we're I think we're in really really good shape 
uh, in that regard. We've gotten some really great grants, uh, you know, in that will help us with a home health aid a program here in Quincy and in Plymouth. Our EMT programs extending from uh, from Quincy and going down to Plymouth uh, as well. Also got a, a first, really first in the state grant. Um, you know, from basically uh, partnering with Walgreens and a pharmacy technician. Uh, no one else has that. We went out and got it. And um, so that's going to be again in Quincy and in Plymouth. So that's one interesting to, to watch. So as we increase those programs, it also helps with enrollment because mm-hmm. not only do they take these certificate programs, but also they're taking other courses as well. So, so that's the type of vision uh, I want. And, and as well as you know, more of the community. Again, working with online uh, resources with uh, True Unions, AFL-CIO, uh, 25,000 members, 10,000 members in age nationwide that we're offering courses to. We need to, we need to, to really build upon that online education outside of the city. We have uh, certainly the authority through, uh, through the certain SARA qualifications that we can really, any, any state in the union except for California, don't ask why, uh, we can offer uh, courses. So we're, we're trying to work that. We're working with the Department of Education got a three-year grant, and we're working with Quincy Public Schools. Mm-hmm. So 40 of their teachers would take courses over the summer in, um, in EL education in the classroom. So those are things that um, I think are glimmers you know, uh, of hope and light at the end of the tunnel for really making sure, number one, we're more part of this community, not Quincy and, and, and others, but focusing on Quincy. Quincy is, is so incredibly important. Our early college high school, you know, we're going to be starting that in September. We're already having parent information session, sessions. The Quincy School Committee heard about it at their last uh, committee meeting. So that, you know, you got the dual enrollment. You have early college high school. You have career pathways linked to our programs. That will not only, you know, help, I think, in our program enrollment, it also helps the foundation of Quincy College in Quincy. And I think that's been, you know, somewhat lost in the past probably six or seven years. So, yeah, some of that was discussed uh, by the council also. That they, yeah. They, yeah, didn't feel And that. I don't blame them, yeah. Joe. I don't blame them. And, you know, I think there's this balance. You know, as I said to them, I would love to come before you three or four times a year. But, yep. but when you do go, you, you want to be able to share things and not feel like, you know, they need to be more apart. They need to know exactly what's going on. But we have a board of government. But unfair to the city council when we ask for uh, benefits through, through the mayor and through them, you know, that they, they should be a part of what we're doing, how we're doing it. And we need to listen to them about the perception of Quincy College. So it's always, you know, well balanced. So uh, we'll continue to do that. And I really do want to go back there when it's face to face, especially, and talk about the college and listen to them, but also share with them as well. Uh, QuincyCollege.edu is your website, I know. Folks can go to and get more information um, and also uh, register right online too, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that, that, you know, we have people, uh, we redid everything about how we register, you know, smooth, much more smoothly and it's much more we get back to you immediately. We don't wait two or three days to get back to you. You get on in the chat, we should get back to you immediately somehow. So that's, I think that's a tremendous improvement. Uh, as well. You know, one, one other thing, Joe, if I could. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah. Um, we have uh, the community college was brought up, I think, at, you know, by uh, a couple of the counselors and they're interested in that. But, you know, when you look at the success that we're having, the success that community colleges aren't having, when you look at the declines of, of the 15 community colleges, only two of them really had a decline that was less mm-hmm. than us. I don't mm-hmm. know if I said that the correct way, but you know, the one was 4% decline, one was 5% decline, we were 6% decline. And, and really the range went from 7% up to 31% to some of these community colleges. We have the ability to do some things that if you're a part of the Mass College, uh, um, let's see, Mass College uh, Association or the 15 presidents, you know, now you, you, there's not much room for change because everyone's watching you and what you do and they want to limit somehow communicate uh, limited uh, com- competition. Oh, what I we see. can do, we can start early college high school. We can start a baccalaureate program. If you're in the community college, you're not, you're not going to be in a baccalaureate program. No one's going to allow that to happen. So we do have a lot of freedom uh, with that. Now, what, what, 
what people will say is, well, that could be $30 million, you know, coming in uh, to the college, you know, but that's also $30 million that's taken up by the state and taxpayers. So I don't know if the, the state would really love us to be coming in there. I, I don't think so. But from a perspective from the city and from a college, from a college perspective, I really think that um, we're better off with the ability to be nimble, to be flexible, to be as innovative as possible, because that's what we need. And that's what Quincy College has been since 1958. So uh, compared to the other colleges right now, we're, we're, you know, our enrollment is, is fine and dandy compared to others, but that's not really what you want. You, you, will make, you want to make sure that your enrollment uh, is, is significant. You know, that way you get the revenue. That way you can create more programs for the community and the city. So um, I, mean, I just want to make sure I added that. And I, I appreciate that. Um, and we'll see where we go. But others need to, people need to understand, too, we have regulators. You know, you have the Department of Higher Education. You have the Board of Higher Education. You have the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. You have NETCHI, the New England Council of Higher Education that oversee us, um, as well as the nurses have warned in the okay. state administration. So... We have eyes on us everywhere, and, and um, there are no alarm bells going off uh, at all. In fact, you know, the, the DHU is really thrilled about this whole idea of baccalaureate, you know, because we do a baccalaureate in business. We start small. We create a really good model. And in September, when we start to build that model and implement that model, what the vision is, is now we're going to do, excuse me, to take uh, – to take a look at computer science as the next baccalaureate. So, you know, what I'm seeing and, and hoping and envisioning is that there'll be a series of baccalaureate programs that may start small with patience right, and hard work. They'll grow. And all of a sudden you have a, a college that is a very unique, very, very unique to the city. You know, it's the only one in the country that, that, that uh, is in, in this governance. But um, I, I, I want to share with people that there's a real vision here. And, the more we can plug into this city in particular and have our students go through this pathway, uh, dual enrollment, career pathways, early college, high school, the more they'll see opportunity here and not to, not to have to go out of the city and have to be very affordable. So. Well, I think the, the, the areas you mentioned, um, uh, computer science, business, uh, healthcare, are going to be growing uh, fields in the future for sure. Those are where the opportunities are going to be. Yeah, and you know, I, I mentioned uh, a while ago to you that I, I'm really interested in starting a, uh, a President's Community Council and having a, a very small group of business leaders. So uh, June, June 16th, I'll be meeting with Cynthia Sierra, who I'm sure you know from Man of Health, uh, incredibly talented and dedicated. Janine Mudge, who's, she's the Communication and Marketing Director over at uh, Stop and Shop, a you know, great lady. Jeff Bellows, a Foundation Vice President from Blue Cross, uh, Blue Shield, Rich Fernandez, CEO of Milton uh, Hospital, Tom Harris from right across the street where you are at the Mutual Group. Uh, he's the CEO there. Um, Jen White from Harbor One, mm -hmm. I think she, she's a vice president of the foundation there. Jo Jim Dunphy uh, of, of South Shore Bank. These people, I, I, you know, I want to meet, get them in, a, in one room on June 16th and really talk about what they see as the future of Quincy College, what they see, what, what are the industry needs? Like you just said, healthcare is just so, so important. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should be offering other programs in healthcare that they would say, there's clients out there for this. You know, so give us direction. As well as clear up, you know, make sure that, that every underst everyone understands that there's a perception of Quincy College that uh, it's not enrolling in the program, you don't have programs and, and just kind of dispel all of that and make sure that they understand Quincy College is definitely on the move. Well, we hope we've uh, helped you dispel some of that here, and uh, maybe we should catch up on June 17th, see how that goes, Rick. Yeah, that's great, that's great, and um, you need to remind me. All right, so just you give me a call, email, whatever, set up a Zoom, and I won't show up there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> by, then, uh, by then, I hope we'll be in person again. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, if not, it'd be great to touch base anyway. Uh, we can, and, and anything I can share, any questions you may have, uh, that would be terrific to sit down and talk about. All right. Appreciate it. Right. As always, good to see you.